Yes, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode here on On Clay Hill with me, Seamus Brady, our host. I'm joined by Aaron Prendergast, the man from Gaelic Games Fan TV. Aaron, what a weekend. I mean, I was saying to you off air, like four league finals, particularly the Derry Dublin game, was one of the one of the greatest games of Gaelic football I've seen. It had everything. What a weekend. Yeah, it was absolutely mental, especially the, the Dublin Derry game. Um, like I watched the I watched the game back this morning and um, it's probably rare as a Dublin fan that you watch games back that you lose and you watch it with excitement because I was just so curious to, to see everything back and um, I nearly kind of want to want to watch the game again. Like it was it was a bit of a it was a bit of a mental game. As you said, I had everything, red cards, late drama, probably some contentious refereeing decisions, which I'm sure we'll get on to. Yeah. Um, Derry obviously coming coming to Crow Park. Going toe to toe with Dublin for majority of majority of the game, which again a lot of people probably didn't see coming, and yeah, they were absolutely they were absolutely brilliant, and it was yeah it was some spectacle of a of a game, and um, yeah, like obviously penalties, like I, I've said it before, is it the right way to decide games again like football? Probably not, but at the same time, with the championship coming up and everything else, you know, there was absolutely no other uh, alternative here, so. Um, and, and in the end, probably the better team did win. Like I think Dublin were probably very fortunate to to get to, to extra time. Then obviously the goal comes out of absolutely nothing as well. So um, yeah, like and then obviously the other games. It was weird because like up until the Derry Dublin game, I actually thought all the league finals were fairly disappointing. Um, like Leash against Leitrim was a bit of a no contest. Leash were by far the, the better side. Down in Westmead was very poor, probably up until the final 10, 15 minutes when, when the game got some light. And probably the same with Armagh Donegal. Like Armagh, obviously, uh, Kieran McGinney saying that they had a, a bug within the camp or something. So a lot of their big players didn't play. So, um, yeah, but then Derry and Dublin. Look, uh, I think if you're an advocate for league finals to be scrapped, you're going into the Derry Dublin game thinking, I'm getting what I want. And then all of a sudden, you know, the Derry Dublin game happens and it's like, League finals should never be scrapped. That's exactly the reason why you keep them. Um, look at the the Dublin fans when that goal goes in from Greg McEnany. Look at the the scuffle towards the end of the game. Um, do you know, like, and with the weather as well, like, it just felt like a, a championship game. Do you know, like, it felt like a, a championship weekend. And um, yeah, bit of a bit of a crazy game, no doubt about it. And yeah, cheers for having me on. No bother, no delighted to have you on. It's genuinely you're right it felt like a championship game watching it it felt like a big deal like who came out on the right side and Derry did come out on the right side at the end the final score was Derry 318 Dublin 221 after extra time Derry winning 3-1 on penalties this game was box office as you said it had everything you could want from a game Derry had the game won twice then it goes to extra time such drama Greg McEnany's late goal the scuffle there and then the penalty shootout as well was absolutely super dramatic. And then big respect to both teams as well for having the class at the end to shake hands. You know, there was no mountain or anything at the full-time whistle. It was the kind of, both teams know that there's a very good chance they're going to run into each other down the line. And like long may this continue this rivalry because it was absolute box office, as I said. As I was saying to you off air, it's quite hard to actually know where to start with this game, but I suppose we'll go through it. We'll start with the first half. So at, at half time, the first half had been very, very interesting, but Dublin had obviously got the goal from Colin Baskell. And you got this sense, I thought anyway, Dublin would kick on in the third mm -hmm. quarter and then kind of establish a platform for a victory. It didn't happen, but the first half was very, very interesting. Derry set their stall out, even though Dublin got that goal. Yeah, like it was interesting. Like the first half was probably nearly an entirely different game to to the rest. Um, like I remember, it was kind of funny. Like on the hill, and uh, one of my mates said to me, "Like, geez, this is a bit of a brutal game after about 15, 20 minutes because like Dublin were missing numerous opportunities and chances. Derry were probably not as aggressive as they were in the second half. There was a lot more element of sitting back, absorbing pressure, probably trying to take the the sting out of Dublin. Um, I think maybe Derry were probably aware." that Dublin are obviously coming into the league final in a huge amount of form, huge amount of momentum. Um, and I think if you when if you've played Dublin in the second half, uh, if you played Dublin in the first half the same way you played them in the, in the second half, it could have went wrong. You know, Dublin could have started very strong, could have got a couple of goals, could have been much more sharper on kickouts. Um, so it was kind of a different game. 
and it felt like Derry more so in the first half were just trying to sort of stick in it and keep up with with, with Dublin. Um, but then in the second half, like they flipped the switch and they completely uh, went, up, you know, all guns blazing and um, completely tore Dublin to shreds. Like they finished with three goals, they probably could have ended up with five or six. Um, and yeah, like the first half was. Like it was interesting watching Dublin. It was kind of reminiscent of Dublin of last year at times, where they seemed very reluctant to to pull the trigger. Um, mm-hmm. first time really watching Dublin this year, where you're looking at it and thinking, Cormac Costello, you know, you're missing him. He's a big player. Um, you're obviously missing Paul Mannion, who obviously came off the bench but looked very rusty and, and missed a couple of chances. Um, and it was the first time really you were looking at it, James McCarthy, Cluxton. Fitzsimons, I think it's the first time really all year that Dublin look like they missed those players because, look, if those players are playing, maybe Derry still would have won the game. Who knows? Um, but at the same time, I think Dublin were, were certainly missing those players and it was very uh, it was very evident throughout the uh, majority of the game. Yeah, no, I do think that they definitely make a big impact. Derry, on the other hand, they were missing uh, Garrett McKinless, who usually sits at centre-back. He's massively important to how they play. There's also rumours as well. I've seen this on Twitter and I'll be talking about it in the Social Media React episode later today. Make sure you check that out. About Callum Brown potentially returning. So, I mean, if he returns, that would be very, very interesting. So, Conor McKenna-esque, if you like, for Tyrone. We have a comment in here from Gary Hutton. He says, Derry has soon learned, thanks to Mickey Hart, that they wanted to be a top team. Dublin are the best team in Ireland as a Derry person. We are away off Dublin and Kerry High lads. We are just learning. I wouldn't agree with that, that you're way off Dublin and Kerry. I really wouldn't. I personally think if Gary McKinless's shot had it gone in against Kerry in the All-Ireland semi-final last year, I think Derry would have got to the All-Ireland final. I think that they were that close. Um, and then, look, they'd beaten Dublin in Croke Park. I know that it finished level. And we'll get into how Derry did struggle to close the game out um, in normal time and indeed in extra time. Another comment in here from Gary says, O'Gara doesn't get the praise. He is very important to the dubs. Yeah, you were saying this out there. Killing O'Gara's form in extra time was absolutely brilliant. He popped up with two absolutely crucial points, which you know kept mm-hmm. Dublin at Derry's tails. And that's the thing that I'm going to go on to next. Second half, Derry get the burst. They get the penalty. I'm not 100% sure it was a penalty, but they get it. And Shane McGuigan tucks it away. Then Owen McAvoy comes up and hits an absolute belter into the net. And we'll just... Park aside a few minutes to talk about him. Owen McAvoy's performance. This fella is still, what, 20 years old, 21 years old? Flying up from centre-back and hitting not one, but two absolute screamers into mm. the Hill 16 end against Dublin and Croke Park. I mean, doesn't get much better than that. What a talent this guy is. Absolutely, yeah. Like, and obviously being on the hill, watching him put both of those two goals in, like, I'd, I wasn't familiar who, who it was, to be honest with you, when I was on the hill. Like, obviously, you're not always familiar with with every player but I remember thinking I was like geez this lad is causing all sorts of uh, all sorts of chaos I think he had another goal chance as well which which was saved um and yeah like he, what what a performance so he, he was obviously playing more so a full back in in previous uh, last year but he seems to now be in the in the half back line which is a bit of a master stroke really from uh, Mickey Hart and yeah like Dublin Dublin just couldn't deal with him at all um and and it was very vintage Derry in terms of scoring defenders and everything else. And um, yeah, like the both of those two finishers were, were absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, you could have had any goalkeeper in there. You know, Cluxton wouldn't have been saving them. Um, you know, any goalkeeper in the country, Rory Began, whoever you want to say, like wouldn't have been saving those efforts. Those were two absolute crackers. Um, like one in the roof of the net, the other one in the I think was in the roof of the net as well. So um, yeah, like he he was absolutely brilliant. And um yeah Derry like had multiple goal chances like Dublin were really struggling off of kickouts like in in both both ends so um but yeah oh McAvoy like what a what a brilliant performance uh he was nominated for footballer of the year last year I don't think he won it but um I think he I think he'll probably win it this year um and he could be very much on line in line to win an all-star as well he definitely could, especially if Derry fulfill their potential and win an All Ireland title. You'd imagine Al McAvoy will have a big role in that. There were then, so Derry put themselves into a very, very strong position, and it looked like they could see it out and see it over the finish line. They didn't, and they missed a couple of big opportunities. I'm talking like Connor Glass hit a yeah. 45 way wide. Then I think Kieran McFall had a chance as well, where he took the shot on and probably wasn't a smart decision to do that. 
and you just got the feeling like you're turning over big opportunities to Dublin and Dublin were just crawling them back bit by bit but they were still one point behind coming into the dying seconds and I'm just going to call a spade a spade here as a Dublin fan that was not a foul on Keane Murphy Dublin were very very lucky that that free was given by Connor Lane and um, obviously slotted over by Conor Callaghan to send the game to extra time it felt like Dublin had really got out of jail there and um, the extra time it wasn't to be anyway for Dublin we still lost on penalties but dramatic finish yeah absolutely like yeah as, as you said like Derry maybe trying to close out the game they obviously struggled um quite quite largely with that like they probably they had mo- like even an extra time as well in multiple chances where they were running at Dublin and they had the ball and they could have popped the ball over but they just chose not to they chose to keep the ball instead and then eventually they'd lose the ball or, or something would happen and then Dublin would would gain a, an attack at the other end and, and that's very much what happened at the end of normal time like Sean Bugler has a chance uh, pops it wide you're thinking right that's it you know there's 10 15 seconds left on the clock here there's no way Dublin are, are going to get it back um I was surprised Oren Lynch went short I can understand why he did go short because you want to ensure that you keep the ball but I think if he goes long like there's a couple of seconds left like he, even even with a breaking ball the ref probably could have blown the whistle even if Dublin had won it back so I was surprised mm-hmm. he didn't just completely boot it, uh, in all honesty, because Derry were winning. the only foot he put wrong. He was, yeah. I remember there was a stat yeah. next to time that he successfully retained 30 of 32 kickouts, which is incredible. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and to be fair, it wasn't it wasn't actually like his fault, obviously, for the for the free coming coming about. Like obviously Derry lose possession. It was a great the, the ball gets won back by Bakeem Murphy. Um and then yeah, as you said, it certainly wasn't a foul. He you know, he gives the ball away and then goes down and, and Connor Lane calls it as a free and um yeah like it definitely definitely wasn't a free there's there's absolutely no uh no debate in that but um yeah look sometimes sometimes you get sometimes you get these things you know sometimes the luck goes your way um and and to be fair Con popped it over the bar and into extra time we went. Yeah, no, certainly. We have another question in here from Gary. He says, can I pose the question as, how do you think Kerry, Galway and Ironman and Donegal fear Derry or Dublin after that? We suppose, I don't think so. Give me your thoughts. What happened to Dublin? Um, being honest, in that game, it was just a real back and forth. I think Derry just had Dublin's number in the second half. Derry were playing better. Um, in terms of, do Kerry fear Dublin? Maybe slightly, a little bit after the game in Croke Park. Like, I'm not trying to say the Kerry are afraid of Dublin, per se. They're not, but they definitely will carry the scars of the Croke Park game into the championship, and they'll be hurt by that. There was no question. Like, I did speak to Jack O'Connor after the game, and he was hurt by it. He was really, really hurt by it. He wasn't happy. And why would he be? They got absolutely, they got their ass handed to them in Croke Park against their biggest rivals. Galway, Armad, Donegal... It's difficult to know what their mindset would be heading into the game. Armagh know that they were right there with Derry in the Ulster final last year. Like penalty, but Armagh should have won the game before it got to penalties. Donegal, I don't think will fear Derry. I think actually, if we're talking about that game, that's weirdly the type of game that Jim McGuinness absolutely loves. Like it gives off real vibes of when he beat Dublin with Donegal in 2014. Like that they have this unstoppable juggernaut feel about Derry. And Donegal caught Dublin in 2014 when nobody expected them to be caught. So it could be the perfect storm. But obviously that is for a future day. So into extra time we went. Um, Derry got their third goal from Owen McAvoy. And I really thought when that hit the net, that's it. it. It cannot, Derry cannot let this slip again. And when we're talking about it, they did let it slip. Dublin did get the equaliser and it was a sensational finish by Greg McEnany. And please talk about that goal when I pass back over to you. It was how he managed to find an inch of space in that box and rifle it into the net was sensational. And Joe probably put up a funny tweet after. He said, the minute McEnany came on, he turned to the person beside him and said, hardly a household name. And then McEnany sticks it in the net. But crazy finish. But will there be a slight bit of worry in Mickey Hart that, that's twice now that they failed to close the game out. Penalties is a lottery, but it's twice, full time and extra time, that they failed to close the game out and Dublin pulled them back in without all those players that you mentioned. Like, is that something that will be on his mind? I think it will be, yeah. But at the same time, they probably haven't been in that situation too often in Crow Park against big teams. Um, so it's something that 
Like, although Derry have won the last two Ulster titles, they are still relatively new on the block in terms of pushing for an All Ireland. Um, like it feels like this is the this is one of the first years where people are looking at them as genuine All Ireland contenders. Like even last year and the year before, a lot of people dismissed them. A lot of people said they're dark horses, or you know they might go on a run, they might cause a few surprises along the way. But nobody really looked at them as serious contenders. Whereas I think now people are genuinely look at looking at them and thinking, you know, if someone says Derry are going to win the All Ireland, nobody's like that's a crazy yeah. opinion. Like that's a very valid valid statement to have. So. Look, yeah, it, it is something for them to, to definitely work on. Because even against Kerry, if you remember last year, they had a bit of a lead going into the final, sort of ten, you know, ten minutes or so, and and then Kerry. Arma as well, well, man. Arma as yeah. well. They they really threw that game back to Arma in the last few minutes of the Ulster final. So, mm. yeah, like it, it is. Perfect. Yeah, it, it definitely is something for them to to work on because like there was moments in extra time with a three point lead, they they had chances where they could have popped the ball over. And if they had to pop the ball over, then you know that that last minute goal doesn't doesn't happen. Do you know what I mean? Um, or, or maybe it does happen, but it doesn't mean anything because Derry still have a, a one point advantage. So, yeah, it was a little bit surprising that they didn't take any of those chances or or, or, or go. You know, they had a couple of half goal chances as well. Um, so yeah, look, that that certainly will be something for for Mickey Hart to work on. But it's probably a good thing as well because, um, you know, this has happened in a league final. It hasn't happened in a in a championship game and um, which look ultimately for Derry, that's going to be the, the, the big focus from, from a Derry perspective is, is trying to win that all Ireland. So um, yeah, I think, I think, I think it's, they'll be disappointed with, with that element of it, but at the same time, they still won the game and there's still, there's still a good bit to, to focus on going into Donegal in a couple of weeks time. Yeah. And then a word on Greg McEnany as well. Like he, Hmm. For you know, young lad onto the team, first year in the Dublin senior panel, he gets brought on because of an injury. Like I don't think Desi was bringing him on to make the impact, but he finds himself in the square, gets the break, and for a young lad to have the composure to actually, if you watch the replay back, he takes a little sidestep and then rifles it into the top corner. Like for a young lad to have the composure in that circumstance, hats off. Absolutely, yeah, and it's probably testament to a lot of the fringe players for, for for Dublin this year um that have really stood up like the likes of Ross McGarry's been been absolutely outstanding Keen Murphy's been very very good Sean Bugler coming back in has has been outstanding um Greg McEnany coming on getting a goal Killian O'Gara coming on getting two points Killian McGuinness has been outstanding as well like it was actually probably more Dublin's senior players that probably actually disappointed yesterday like Paul Mannion missing a couple of unusual phrase that you'd normally see him score. Kieran Kilkenny was very quiet. Con was probably marked out a game. But yeah, the goal was was absolutely mental. Like obviously watching it on the hill at the other end and you know I managed to record it as well, which 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 was probably made things a little bit more uh, chaotic. Um but maybe m- maybe looks a little bit silly now with Derry still going on to win the game. But at the same time like it was um yeah it was absolutely mental. Like uh, I've no idea how he managed to he couldn't have put it any more in the top corner um, than yeah. he did. It was probably the only place he could have put the ball to ensure it ended up in the back of the net. Um, and yeah, yeah look, the Anthony Nash against Clare vibes, didn't it? Like that, he <laughs> literally found the post stamp in the corner, the one literally, place yeah. that was open. Michael Meehan against Cork as well, where Cork yeah. had what twelve lads on the line and Meehan still stuck it in. It was just pure drama. And then we will touch on. The handbags, as you like. Um, after that goal goes in, look, it has been coming. Like you've got two teams that are fantastic, two of the best teams in the country. They're so determined to win this game. They're such born competitors. Like you got people like Connor Glass that like fella just doesn't seem to lose in life ever. And then on the Dublin side, you got people that have been used to winning ever since they started playing with the Dublin senior team. McEnany scores that goal. It's an insane surge of adrenaline that Dublin have somehow pulled themselves out of the fire. You can see a couple of lads are kind of screaming in the Derry lads' faces, being like, we've got you now, like we're going to penalties. It's only natural that there's a few shoves and pushes and everything like that. And I was saying it to you off air, I don't think that's nothing on the Galway Armagh scrap. There was no nasty punches or scraping of the face or anything like that. It was very much laying down the marker like you you're not going to mess with me like you're not going to walk over me 
and both sides shook hands very respectfully at the end. So as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I'm not bothered by the handbags. I, it actually added to the spectacle. Yeah, like I, th I think it's it's probably a reflection on today's society that everything just gets completely blown out of proportion. Like I've seen people over on TikTok and Twitter saying, you know, Paddy Small should never play a game in Gaelic football ever again. And uh, I've seen some people say mad, mad things that I'm just left, you know, wanting to like completely just throw my phone out the window. Um, but yeah, like it was a couple of scuffles. There wasn't really a lot in in it. Paddy Small got a second yellow, red carded, fair enough. It, it is a yellow yeah. card. Glass obviously drags a man down, gets a yellow. As I said to you off air, I think Glass was maybe a little bit lucky that he didn't get a yellow previously in in the game because there was a moment at the other end where he kicked the ball back on the pitch after after Dublin had already restarted. And then obviously because there's two balls on the pitch at the one time, the referee made um Comfort retake the, the kick out. And and Dublin were away like when 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 they'd already uh, kicked the ball. So um but yeah, like it's it's one of them little bit of scuffles back and forth. Um maybe Fenton a little bit unlucky to to get red carded as well. I thought that one was actually a little bit harsh. Can you talk um, about that? Because, like, hmm. personally, when I watch this, it's one of my pet hates in Gaelic football. Like, you can clearly see Ewan and Mulholland punches Fenton in the ribs. And it's a tackle that happens all the time. Dublin lads have done yeah. it. This isn't a bias thing. But it happens across the board where people punch each other in the ribs. And you can see Fenton, like, wincing and then being like, yeah, you know, you little shit. Like, you know, come back here. Like, and then he... He goes to push him, but because Fenton is so much bigger than Ewan Mulholland, he's obviously going to push him in the head, and his fist was closed. So he probably, in my opinion, did slightly deserve to walk. I, I think I wasn't, like, overly, ah, like, come on. I could kind of understand why he walked, because you can't have such a reckless act of aggression in the middle of the pitch, and nothing happens for it. Um, But... That tackle needs to be clamped down on. That punching in the ribs. like Because people get away with it all the time. And I wasn't surprised that Fenton reacted like that. And the thing is, is that Fenton never reacts like that. How many games have we seen him play where teams have been targeting him? Like putting Jack Barry on an example. And yeah. we've never seen him react like that. He clearly got punched in the ribs. And it's a tackle that doesn't get clamped down on. Fenton shouldn't have reacted the way that he did. I'm not condoning that reaction. But it is a tackle that gets let away with all the time absolutely yeah well it's one of them like if fenton had it gone down after that you know smack in the in the ribs you know it's probably a yellow card and dublin win it win a free kick and then the red card for fret for fenton probably never happens but mm -hmm. yeah like it was it wasn't a full force push it was more just kind of of a shove um and because fenton is obviously twice his size it, it probably looks a lot worse than than it is it's it's one of them. Some of them get given. Some of them. Some of them don't. Um, but, bit of play uh, acting. Yeah. Bit of play acting. Yeah. He wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't that badly hurt. <laughs> no question. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. But but look, these things happen. You know, like if part of the game, Dublin have definitely yeah. taken part. Oh, oh, <laughs> a couple yeah, of times. Yeah. John Small is a master at showing the shoulder yeah, back. Yeah. Yeah. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. And. Yeah, like there was probably there was probably multiple poor decisions, really. Like there was definitely a, a number of soft frees that, that were given Dublin's way. There's no question about that. The penalty for for Derry, I don't think was a penalty. It was outside the the rectangle from from Owen Merchant um, and and Sean McMahon's. Uh, you know, like that wasn't a foul. He was nowhere near him, so you can't. You, you know, that it's definitely it definitely wasn't that one. He was given the penalty for. So yeah, like probably bad decisions going. Both ways, but look in the end, Derry won the game. It was probably the fair result. So yeah, yeah. Now we've a couple of comments in here. One from Kieran McBreen. He says, "Best league final in years." I called four one-sided games. Never been more happy to be wrong. Kudos to Dublin Derry for what was some spectacle for a neutral. Absolutely spot on. It was box office. Comment in here from Gary Hunt. He says, "Lads, as I was at the game, I think the ref was a bit iffy. Just a thought. What happened to the Dublin midfielders? Let us Derry lads run. It's shocking." I still rate Kerry big time. And then Jack has responded to that by saying Kerry could be in the long grass. Gary, don't write them off completely. They probably know they will have to improve. Others will probably fear a bit more. I do agree. Kerry are definitely not written off. I think it's the All-Ireland winners, like I'd be fairly confident saying this, and it's not exactly a genius moment for me to point it out, but I do think the All-Ireland winners are coming from Dublin, Kerry and Derry. Like I'd be very yeah. surprised if it comes from outside that triangle. It's got, It's going to be one of them. Um, 
so to see them lock horns you know was really really interesting to see what they would show and everybody's saying oh there's going to be a bit of shadow box and all i don't think there was any shadow box in there to be honest that, that was that was very much round one in the books and Derry won that round narrowly so it's going to be very very interesting to watch let's hope they back it up i really really hope that they stick with championship genuinely i hope that we have because we have seen instances where a team beats Dublin, gives it the big one, and then when it comes to championship, nothing happens. We saw it with Kildare, and I, I'm not comparing Derry to Kildare, by the way. I think Derry are far, far better, but we have seen this before. Hmm. We definitely have, all right, and um, yeah, I suppose it's, it is one of them for, for Derry to go and back it up and, and obviously per, perform to the best of their ability, but in fairness, like I think considering how strong they've looked in in Ulster in the last couple of seasons, um, obviously winning back-to-back Ulster titles and um, now obviously getting that significant big win in, in Crow Park versus Dublin as well. I think it will only stand to them. It will only make them better, as we were saying, probably of Garrett McKinless maybe to to come back in. I know obviously we were seeing a few a few rumours about Cam Brown, but I will remind it is April Fool's Day, so, uh, you know, you, you, you wouldn't, you would, I, I don't wow. know. I don't know if I believe them, to be honest. Um, <laughs> you know but I, I mean? saw that tweet. That tweet was yesterday, so... Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I did see that as well. I did see that as well. I've seen that from Mal McMullen, who's usually very uh, reliable from, from the Irish news, <laughs> or, from, or from the Gaelic life. But I don't know. I, it's, I'm just very, very sceptical, you know. I've yeah, seen some, I've, I've well, seen some actually, mad things this morning. I've seen, I've seen Mick McCarthy's coming back to Ireland. Um, I've seen, you know, I've seen Garrett Southgate going to Liverpool. I've seen some mad uh, things this morning. Um, I was going to throw an old April Fool's up myself, but uh, I decided, you know, I think I'll give it a miss. I think I'm too late now. <laughs> well, then, speaking on the penalty shootout, then we'll give a quick word to this because the reality is, penalty shootout is a lottery. Once it gets to that point, it's out of your hands. You know, it, like in terms of the the coaches and your ability to. Your ability to have any impact on it you pick your five lads to go up and take the penalties and then you just hope that they do their job and they stick it away the reality is is that desi farrell and mickey hart both achieved the same thing if you like i know the mickey's lads won the penalty shootout but they both got them to the penalty shootouts so for desi farrell and mickey hart like both of them kind of did their jobs similarly enough like they both got to a penalty shootout in a division one final Derry took their penalties better, no question about it. Like Conor Callaghan hits, you know, the top of the p- crossbar and the post, like that bit where they link up together. Yeah. Then Larkin O'Dell, not a great penalty from him, say by Owen Lynch, and then Tom Lehiff hits the inside of the post as well. Derry stick away all their penalties. Can't have any real complaints about that, and you know, all of them very, very calmly taken. Derry took the penalties better, and they won the shootout. Absolutely, yeah. Like, and it was probably it's probably one of them. If Fenton and Paddy Small hadn't been sent off, they probably would have been two of the penalty takers, you'd imagine. Um, and and obviously, you know, if you had had Costello there, maybe he would have uh, taken a penalty. It would have been interesting to see who Dublin's fifth taker was. Was it Kilkenny? Was it Killian O'Gara? That would have been interesting to see. But um, but yeah, look, you know, um, Shane McGuigan, you, you knew he was going to score. You knew Glass was going to score. Those two were were absolute bankers and. Um. Yeah. Like I suppose in in regard, like Con obviously hits the bar, Tom Lahiff hits the post. They're two very unfortunate ones. Um. In 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 all honesty, um. To to both have missed those chances, and Lorcan Odell misses one as well. Like it's, yeah. Like it's one of them. Unfortunately, these these are things that that can happen. Um. Do you know when it comes to when it comes to penalty shootouts, could you know maybe you could have gone with Killian O'Gara to take a penalty considering he came on and he was playing really well maybe Brian Howard should have took one maybe Kilkenny should have took one earlier but look ultimately it's um it is what it is and yeah fair play to Derry yeah no that's it uh we're coming here from Gary says I love Derry Aaron and James so lol sorry Seamus as I said on Aaron's channel penalties are useless um I think they do give a bit of drama, but I definitely wouldn't be using them for championship. And then the April Fool's Day joke of the stream goes to Gavin O'Reilly. He says Damien Comer has transferred to Kilmacud Croaks. I mean, that one would blow up the GA world if Croaks got Galway's other best forward mm-hmm. as well. Um, we yeah. obviously another comment in from Gary that earlier on, the one that talked about the referee being a bit iffy. Now, 
as we said, this has been all over social media as well. A lot of people complaining about Connor Lane's performance. Look, the last minute free kick to Dublin, that wasn't the free. And um, the penalty as well, I don't think was a penalty. Like there's big decisions he got wrong on both sides. And yeah, like there is an issue with both directions. I think that there's a disgusting lack of respect towards referees in our games at, at levels now, especially club level. There seems to be no protection for them whatsoever. Hmm. But then on the other side, referees aren't held accountable for bad decisions that they make. Like in American football, like the ref has to come out with the microphone and explain why he has given that decision. And in yeah. GAA, he'll give a decision and, the players will be like, why? And the ref will be like, none of your business. <laughs> you tell me? It's mm -hmm. just is what it is. And there was one part, I put up a tweet on the Enclair Twitter page in the first half where Chrissy McCaig literally drags Con O'Callaghan back. He literally, Con has done the backdoor cut and he's going on to a hand pass. And Chrissy literally just holds his shoulders and yeah, he doesn't get a black card. And I'm like, that is the literal definition of a black card. He's dragging him to stop him getting to the ball intentionally. And you're like, that wasn't given as a black card. He won't be asked why he didn't give it as a black card. He won't be held accountable for it. And again, these decisions are all the powers in the referee's hands and they're not really questioned on why they gave key decisions. Same thing with the free at the end. He just gave the free in and he didn't say, you did this, you did this. That's why I gave the free in. And nobody will know why he gave the free in. So we're all left to speculate. It was the same thing with, with Claire and Westmead earlier in the league. Everybody reported that it was a square ball. And it was only Jason from the Loaf of Bread GA podcast that said it wasn't a square ball. It was a free out for a push on the Westmead defender. But the referee just, get, just pointed with his hand out. Yeah. And then everybody was left to kind of speculate why he didn't give the goal. And square ball was widely reported across social media. And off it went. So I do think that we have an issue both ways. We have an issue towards respect to the officials, but we also have an issue with accountability from those officials when they make bad decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and I think Twitter is a bit of a cesspit at the best of times. Like when it comes to 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 these type of things. Um, and yeah, like I think yeah, there was there was there was, there was some very poor decisions that went. Both ways, there definitely probably were more soft frees given Dublin's way. There's, there's absolutely no doubt about it. I remember seeing one or two that, that, that were quite poor um, that were given Dublin's way and and maybe weren't given to Derry. But at the same time, there, you know, there was there was multiple occasions as well where I think Dublin should have been given decisions. As you said, the Chrissy McKay one, which which I'd forgotten about, the, the penalty incident. Um, as I said before, when Glass kicked the ball back on the field, and the umpires and and the referees just decided to to be fair, the referee maybe wasn't looking at it, but then again, he shouldn't he should have been looking that way. How the umpires didn't spot that, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's 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 one of them in you know things that things that happen. Um, and, and unfortunately, in big games in Crow Park, that there, there there does often seem to be refereeing decisions that are, often do seem to influence. The outcome of uh, of games and you know obviously all the chat about do, do you bring in some sort of VAR or TMO type system into the GEA is a is an interesting is an interesting topic. I, I don't know how you would do it. Um, I wouldn't. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you why because of steps. Simply put, I wouldn't just because yeah. of steps. Let's be honest. I play. I take five, six steps every time I have the ball. And every single GEA player does. You're taught to take five steps, six steps. You know, just yeah. don't stop with the ball. And basically, if you were to bring in a TMO thing, every single score would be cancelled. Every single goal would be cancelled because the players would have taken five steps. So if they take five steps, it has to be a free out by the letter of the law. So that would be very difficult to implement without it being a VAR style situation where it does kind of ruin the game. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's a, it is a fair point. Um, and whether I'd like to see it as well, I, I, I don't know either because if it was very stop start, if it wasn't used correctly, that would be, that would be worry. I think there's definitely, there definitely could be some benefits to it. Like if they were to just use it for big, big moments in terms of penalties, um, red in terms of like red cards, if they were to just use it for that, 
But the problem is, like, do you just use it for that? Because when they brought it into the Premier League, that's what everyone thought it was going to be for. And then and and then and now they look at absolutely everything and they take yeah, about 10, minutes, minutes. 10 minutes just to look at one one thing, do you know that way? So um like obviously and it does harm the fans yeah. experience. Like when you're in the stadium, they put up a purple screen that just says VAR and you haven't a clue what's going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, like I'm sure if the GEA brought it in, it'd probably be used differently. Maybe it would be completely better, but you just don't know. Like there'd be a lot of unknowns about it. So um but you're not yeah. allowed in stadiums. It's a guideline to not show contentious issues up on the screen because yeah. you don't yeah. want to whip up a frenzy in the crowd. Yeah. So I do think that I wouldn't be surprised if we went, you know, towards kind of a similar thing in our game. Mm-hmm. I don't think we'd implement it right. But uh, the reality is, look, <clears throat> we'll have a word on this as well. And then I'll wrap it up. We'll move on to Division 2. When the final penalty occurred and Derry were crowned league champions it was very calm there was no real celebrations they shook hands with Dublin Dublin as well shook hands with them and I actually thought like that was a really cold moment from Derry I remember because I was watching the game with my dad and the minute that the minute that the full-time whistle went he was like to me he was like I think they're making a statement here by, you know, not over celebrating this game that they're like this isn't the one we want we want the championship and I was like, do you know what? I can kind of see what you mean. Because say, for example, Mayo, when they beat Dublin in the All-Ireland semi-final in 2021, they acted like they'd won the All-Ireland. They were like, we've beaten Dublin in the semi-final. We're through to the final. And they were crying on the pitch and acting like they'd won the whole damn thing. And Tyrone probably looked at that and absolutely wet themselves laughing. Hmm. Like thinking like, you still have to beat us, lads. <laughs> like Dublin weren't that good that year. And obviously Tyrone had different ideas in the All-Ireland final and beat them. Like, the reality is, Derry, when the full-time whistle went, shook hands with Dublin, and it was very much a, this is not the real thing that we want. We want the All-Ireland, and then we'll celebrate Wild. It was a cold moment. Both teams had the class to shake hands at the end as well. Mm. Fair play to both teams. A very intense, competitive game. Both of them shook hands with honour at the end. And it was very much a, we're going to see you down the line type of handshake absolutely yeah like it was um yeah because i remember looking at like obviously looking looking that way and, and seeing Derry's reaction to when they won it yeah they, they were very calm composed like there wasn't they didn't run towards the goalkeeper or anything like that like they instantly all turned and shook the the hands of the dublin players and um yeah it was kind of it was mad to see because considering what had happened about you know three four five minutes previous you were kind of like that that's a you know that, that, that was a little bit interesting but yeah fair play um and and look at I think Derry you know they didn't bring Mickey Hart you know into Derry to to win league titles you know they, they brought him in to win the All Orleans um albeit look they'll, they'll take the league title they'll be they'll be delighted with it they'll celebrate maybe in their own way um you know in whatever way they will obviously obviously Donny Gall is is looming so that'll be the the big focus now but um yeah look it's it's another big trophy for Derry they're, they're they're making a habit of picking up silverware um they've obviously done two 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 of those big triumphs have, have been via penalties but um yeah look like they, they got over the line in the end and you know they'll be they'll be they'll take some stop and now going into Ulster and the All Ireland they certainly will like it's been an absolutely incredible journey up through the ranks and I mean, as Jarlett Burns said in his speech five years ago, they were in Division Four. Like, mm-hmm. it's absolutely incredible. The rise of Derry football is extraordinary. Back to back Ulster Championships and now a Division One league title. It's been absolutely extraordinary. Uh, and Jarlett Burns, quick word on him. Like, I mean, his speech is far better. I'm sorry. They just think like, the way he was able to build up the crowd and the way he was able to give respect to these lads. I thought he nailed it. I thought his four speeches, he threw in the bit of Gaelga, but then he also would translate it and then he would also keep everybody in the loop and he'd give all the respect. I just thought he was class. Absolutely, yeah. Like, I mean, it, it helps that he's getting the names right, first of all. Um, <laughs> or like with, with Larry McCarthy or McConnell, or, you know, he's always getting the, the name the names wrong, like every, you know, all the time. Yeah. Um, you know so like that was very very helpful and yeah ab- absolutely brilliant and um, very good speeches all across the board for for all four finals um, and and yeah because they, they, those always are the, the key moments you know especially when it comes to the all Ireland series when we look back at teams 
lifting lifting the all Ireland crowns. You know, you always look at those speeches and those moments. They're always things that definitively stand out. So yeah, fair play to him. He he did absolutely nail it. He certainly has. And look, he, he speaks very, very well. And anybody I've met who has met Jarlath, I haven't had the privilege, sorry, of meeting him, but anybody that I've met that has met him, they say really good things about him. And he seems like a really good fit for the job. So we'll wrap this up. Derry 318, Dublin 221 after extra time. Derry winning 3-1 on penalties. Absolutely box office game this was. It was absolutely extraordinary. It had everything you could want. Like mm. the Shamozel added to the drama somewhat, the penalty shootout, Greg McEnany's late goal, controversial decisions, Owen McAvoy, extraordinary performance from him hitting two absolute belters into the Hill 16 goal. Performances of the people like Shane McGuigan, Connor Glass, you know, Killian McGuinness was fantastic as well, Killian O'Gara in extra time. And then fair play to both teams at the end of such a competitive game for having the class to shake hands. And it very much gave off the signs that these two are going to meet each other down the line. Derry have very much stapled themselves as if you didn't believe it already. But Derry are right there as all Ireland contenders after this. What a Division 1 final it was. Now we're going to move on to Division 2. So Donegal played our man this one. Bit of a strange game. Finished 15 points to 14 in favour of Donegal. As you said, like I wasn't 100% aware of the bug that was going around the Armagh team, but definitely when I seen the Armagh starting 15, you know, there's a big Reen O'Neill shaped hole in the forward line. And I was mm. wondering for ages why on earth he wasn't bringing him in. Like it took ages for him to be introduced. Armagh were losing, then they had the game won, and then they lost it again. And again, it's a heartbreaking defeat in Croke Park for Armagh under Kieran McGinney. Yeah, it just seems to be all too common, unfortunately, for for Armagh. Like I think we've seen these type of games on on multiple occasions with Armagh. It was, it was probably very similar to the Ulster final last year as well, where they they were losing for the majority. They fought back, then they were in front, and and then obviously they 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 still end up losing the game. Same against Monaghan as well. Remember when Ryan O'Neill scored that point, and everyone thought Armagh had won it, and then Monaghan went down the other end and equalised, and then won via penalties. So. Yeah, it's it must be painful being an Armagh fan at the moment, uh, watching them in these in these big games. Like it's, do you know what me and Matthew noticed as well, man? Which is crazy. Me and Matthew noticed this on uh, on our last episode together. I can't remember was it on mine or his, but we noticed that a lot of painful moments for Armagh have been down into that goal at the Dublin yeah. stand, and then for Kieran McGinney personally, a lot of painful moments have been down into that goal. You think of, yeah. for example, when he was killed air manager, when Dublin got that ridiculous free at the end of the 2011 Leinster semi-final, it was down into the Davin goal that Bernard Brogan got that free. You think of Rob Kelly hitting the crossbar for Kildare 2010 all Ireland semi-final against Down. It was down into that goal that he hit the bar. Benny Kilter's square ball, it was down into that goal. Armand's two penalty shootout defeats have been down into that goal. And of course, the winner, for Donegal was down into that goal as well. He, we were saying this: if Croke Park <laughs> decide to, you know, put in new goalposts, you were saying it wouldn't be surprised if McGinney tries to get them and burn them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because on top of that, from an Armagh perspective, Ushin McConville, the penalty that he missed in the 2002 All Ireland final, was down into that goal. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I mean, it's um, you know, it's, maybe it's a bit like the curse with Mayo or something. Do you know that way? Like this is another. This is something else that's 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 happened to our man. We'll have to we'll have to see the backstory into maybe why all this is happening. But um <laughs> well, but yeah. plays the curse there. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, look, it, it is mad. Like it's all just small margins and um, you know, just key moments. Like you feel like with our man or not, they're not far away. They're definitely not far away at all, but it's just those big moments that let them down. But ultimately, though, like even from an Arma perspective, I wouldn't be too disappointed. With this defeat, um, like obviously, like when you look at it, Rian O'Neill obviously comes on with 20 minutes to go. Stephen Campbell comes on, uh, Ushin O'Neill comes on, Jason Duffy comes on. You've got Jamar Hall, Ross McQuill, and Aiden Nugent, who all uh, I think Jamar Hall might have come on, but Ross McQuill and Aiden Nugent didn't feature. Um, like it was unusual, like especially Crow Park. Like you know, you look at Armagh's run in Ulster as well, like they're playing for a man in a couple of weeks, which is not the same as Donegal playing Derry, like if we're being honest. So for Armagh, it was the perfect time to play their best team, test themselves out versus Donegal, get a win, build a bit of confidence going into Ulster.
But as Kieran McGinney said, look, obviously there was a bug that ran, you know, throughout the camp. So a lot of those players just maybe weren't um, healthy enough to obviously be starting the game, which is which is completely fair. Um, and yeah, like I think from from an Armagh perspective, disappointing. But look, Donny Gall, to be fair, we're, we're missing big players as well. Like they know McHugh, no Paddy McBurthy. Oh, um, and Gallagher as well is another one yeah. that didn't get mentioned at all. I mean, he's a big loss. Absolutely, yeah. Like and. To be fair, they stood up. They they got the job done. Um, it was a big win for for Jim McGuinness. Interesting enough, him and the entire team stayed back in Crow Park and what and, and watched the league final as well. Obviously, they're playing Derry in a couple of weeks' time, so that will make uh, that will make complete sense. Um, but yeah, Oshin Gallon, uh, very good. Four points from from him. Kieran Thompson was very good, and um, just as well, like some of the scores actually towards the end of this game were absolutely outrageous. Like yeah, Stephen Oshin Campbell. Gallen. Yeah, Stephen Campbell's point was was outrageous. Ushin Conaty, Ushin Gallen, Aaron Doherty get getting getting a point as well. Um, yeah, there was there was some outrageous points here towards the end of this game, and um, yeah, like it was it was clutch, so- wasn't it? Like play like Ushin Gallen and Aaron Doherty's points, especially were just like coming the hour, coming a man type. Mm, absolutely, yeah, like to, to to get over the line, and yeah, like it was mad. It wasn't. The best game of football overall, but in the final five ten minutes, it just completely came alive, um, and and in the end, Donegal, Donegal nicked it. Yeah. Now we've a couple of comments in here. Jack says disappointed with Iron Man. Thought they might be so, thought there might be something up. They were lacking energy for lots of it, yet they still could have snatched it. Yeah, that's definitely it. The game was there for them again, and that's something that will be on McGinney's mind. And then Killian, the football genius, says very weird starting Darren McMullen after not playing at all during the league. And like he didn't even have the greatest game. He missed, you know, I think he had three wides in the last few in the last few minutes. Like he don't get me wrong, I praise, you know, the bravery to shoot, but you know, they're big misses that those opportunities were. Then Gary says here, Donegal as a dairy lad, my mum is no from uh, Donegal. I loved it. I love Arma too. I was waiting for the Old Street Fry. Don't write off both teams. Dublin are a far better team. Um not sure, to be honest, how much better Dublin are than these teams. Like the last time Dublin played Armagh, Armagh won. So it will be interesting if they do lock on in the future. And Donegal under Jim McGuinness, but never, ever, ever take them lightly after 2014, especially. <laughs> so very, very interesting to see. Uh, this game as well, like you're right about it. It was slow, it was a bit pedantic. Armagh were lacking their usual swashbuckling kind of energy where like it's all all guns blazing and then as you said the last 10 minutes they just came to life the last quarter was really really good like for both teams now going into the championship Donegal will definitely be happier like Colin McFadden did his interview after the game with TG Carr and he was saying look we won a league title everyone came through unscathed we didn't come through with any injuries we're in good nick now heading into you know <laughs> the Ulster Championship and what an opener that is going to be Donegal Division 2 champions against Derry Division 1 champions like not a bad opener absolutely and I think it's the re- it's it would be interesting to see where Donegal are at because because they've been obviously playing in Division 2 and the, and the quality isn't the same as Division 1 we know Derry are, are serious contenders they're going to be favourites going into that game no doubt about it but it'll just be interesting to see where Donegal are at like how can because if Derry just beat Donegal comfortably, then it would be like, okay, right, Donegal are not at that level. They're, they're not all Ireland contenders um, or, or dark horses or any, anything like that. They'll probably have a good year, might get to a quarter final, but that's probably as, as far as they can go. But if they can give Derry a real good game and, and even nick a result or, or, or get a win, like it would be some statement and it would just, it would change everyone's perception uh, about Donegal. Um, and it is interesting because I, I do actually think they're probably... Derry's toughest test, maybe in Ulster potentially. Um, like when, I when think you won, so. When I think they actually yeah. are because when you see how they just handled Tyrone and Monaghan, I don't think they're going to have too much issue with them. Yeah, yeah, abs- absolutely. Like especially with Tyrone's inconsistency with the way Derry have played against them in recent games. Monaghan don't quite seem to be out of Derry. Have, uh, have had a good Jim record. against Mickey Hart rivalry as well, man. You know, there's not a manager that Jim loves to beat more than Mickey Hart. Absolutely, like him. I wouldn't write Armagh off either. Look, in a potential Ulster final, if Armagh get there, like Armagh will certainly, with their best players back, they'll, they'll give Derry a, a very good run for it. But I just think, yeah, it's a it's it's a very testing game for for Derry. And it's unusual because they're going in as such big favourites. Um, and that will suit Donegal, that will suit Jim McGuinness. And 
Um, if I, if if anyone could do it, it's him. Do you know? And um, you know, it's mad because his blueprint was probably embedded all over this dairy team over the last couple of years. Um, obviously Mickey Hart's in charge now, and he he's kind of maybe mixed it up ever so slightly. But um, yeah, it's it's going to be a cracking, and it's do you know, there's probably a lot of games in the early part of the championship that a lot of people would probably be like, oh. Well, I watch that maybe I watched it, but with Derry doing all, everybody would be glued to the TV, and I'd yeah. imagine that'll be a complete sellout. That would be a box office, no question about it. Uh, it's a fascinating point that you bring up as well about look, McGuinness's second in command at Donegal when he won the All Ireland was Gallagher, and Gallagher obviously went to Derry, and you know he started the rebuilding process. If you like, obviously he's not the manager anymore, but. You wonder, will Jim McGuinness know one or two things about how they might go into this game in terms of their mindset and their preparation and everything? It's going to be really, really interesting to see. And mm-hmm. um, Donegal edged it. Um, I thought it was a weird performance. They thought they, you know, it was there for them, but they kind of let it slip between their fingers. Donegal clutched up just that little bit more in the final few minutes. Aaron Doherty, Yoshi and Gallen with the pick of the scores, in my opinion. And they get over the line to a Division Two title. Now moving on to the Division 3 final, Westmead against Down. This happened on Saturday evening. Two goals from Jonathan Lyon proved to be the difference as Westmead beat Down to the Division 3 title. And one of the things that I was saying in the in the preparation for this game, in the preview, I was saying that like yourself and myself, Aaron, two UFC fans, I said the almost the, the comparison I would do to this game is like as if Down are like a really flashy striker that knock people out that aren't on their level like hence why they put eight goals past leash like when they smell blood they really can put a beating on a team and Westmead are like a tricky wrestler that like they'll just wrestle you to a decision they're a solid team they have the likes of Ronan O'Toole John Heslin who didn't even really feature that prominently at all Luke Lachlan Ronan Wallace Ray Canellan like they're a really really good team and they might just be able to quell down. And again, it's a performance in Croke Park where when down came up against somebody who didn't just fold, down lost. Absolutely, yeah. And it is becoming a bit of a worry for, for down um, in the fact that when they seem to be under pressure or when things seem to go against them, they do seem to fold. Like it happened against Mead and the Talchin Cup final last year. And when they played West Mead earlier in the year, they, they, they had that game won and then threw it away. And then in this game, like it was back and forth, but once Westmead, you know, clicked into gear towards the end, Down just couldn't couldn't handle them at all. And um they probably like they, they are a very young side, young manager and everything else. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things to learn for Down still. Um, but they're probably just not quite at the level that they would want to be at just yet. But look, it is a young side, you know, going into division two next year will will, will be massive for them. So looking like maybe they'll they'll miss out on on the All Ireland series to go into the Talchin Cup. I think that could actually be of benefit to them because again these young players need game time, um they they need matches and uh, and look they need to win a if they can win something as well because I think someone told me on the build up to the Division Three or after the Division Three final that down have lost I think six or seven finals now in a row on Crow Park um since they won since they last won the All Ireland in in ninety four so. Like down will down will need to, to to you know amend that stat very soon. But fair play to Westmead. Look, they, they have a habit of coming through these games. They are the more veteran team. They were probably missing some um some some key key players throughout the match as well. Um, obviously you had to bring John Heslin on late on. Sam McCart obviously with 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 four points. Um, as you said, Lin Am with two goals. Luke Lachlan very good as well. Um, so yeah, look overall great win for for Westmead. You know, barring anything crazy, they, they should be in the All Ireland series, which I think they'll be happy with because they, they obviously won the Talsha Cup a couple of years ago and I'm sure they won't want to go back in there. And they were fairly competitive in the in the All Ireland series last year. So yeah, very very good se- very good season from a Westmead perspective and they'll be delighted with the with the victory. Yeah, and like for a county like Westmead that doesn't have a city, like I seen that stat they're the only county that doesn't have a main city mm. in it that is competing in the top two divisions in football and in hurling. So, like, they're really getting a tune out of what they've got. There's no question about it. Um, And, look, they were the better team overall. Like, I agree with you, down, slightly inexperienced. And, look, the reality is they played Mead when Mead didn't blink. Down, look, down in those last 10 minutes, ironically. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Down, Down with a team that blinked in the last 10 minutes and Mead were the ones that kicked on. 
And again, final quarter, when the game was there to be won, Westmead were the ones that powered on to the finish line. And I think Laverty will have it in his head that, like, you know, we need to develop a little bit more grit to win those games that are in the fire. Um, they're a very, very flashy team. They've got absolutely extraordinary players like Pat Haver and Oran Murdoch that, like, are very flair players. And when you're not on their level, man, they'll put a beating on you. As I said, like, it's like the knockout artist versus a good wrestler. Styles make fights, and I thought Westmead might just be able to have Down's number. But I thought... I genuinely thought Down would win this game. I thought this would be like a coming of age moment where they've leveled up a bit and they're going to go up. We've commented in here from Gary says, lads, Westmead are strong, but how did they beat Down OMG? Can you just say before you go, Derry are all right, please, lads. Appreciate Derry are obviously all right. <laughs> Division one champions. I think they're they're not a bad team anyway. Um, for Westmead and Down, the last thing I'll say is, does this at all, you know, like how could I put this does it take away from the shine of Downs league campaign the fact that they lost this final um hard to like they still got promoted ultimately which which would have been a key focus like maybe it does ever so slightly it's a weird one though because like you look at it last week they they absolutely hammered Claire and and Westmead lost to Sligo so it's mad how much things can can shift you know in, in a small period of time and I think overall for for down it will just be interesting now. I think to see how the championship goes, and then obviously what follows on onto that. I think that's really what will define Down's season because like if Down like obviously in Ulster last year they, they beat Donegal, which which was a huge win, but then like I suppose probably a different Donegal to the Donegal team now, um, in, in terms of different management and everything else, they obviously got hammered, you know, fairly comfortably by Armagh. Look, you'd expect them to beat Antrim. Probably Armagh again in an Ulster semi final. You'd expect Armagh to win, but it'll be interesting to see how they play in that game. Um, and then, you know, whether it is the Talchin Cup or, or whatever else happens after that, that 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 will be ultimately, I think, what defines down season. Because down, if down do go into the Talchin Cup, I think they would be the favourites in in my opinion. Um, whether they actually go on to win it, that will that you know that that be interesting. So I, I think ultimately that's what will probably define their year. Yeah, no, I think it would be like again because if they do get that far, it will be another final or another showpiece event in Crowd Park, and that will be a good opportunity, a good platform to prove how far that they have come. And now we'll move on to the final division, Division Four. And going into this game, like there was a lot of narrative. It's it's Elitrum's only sixth time ever being in Crowd Park, which is absolutely extraordinary when you think the Crowd Park is being used since the 1890s, and Leitrim have only been there five times before this weekend. So. This weekend, it was their sixth time. And you're thinking, God, what an achievement it would be for Leitrim if they were able to to win this game. Like, what, And, you know, mm. they have beaten Leitrim before. Like, they beat them in Omar Park. But I was saying on the way in that when you're the underdogs, you can sometimes win once, but you very rarely win twice. And I think Leitrim were a bit wise to them, had them figured out. And the goals came from Owen Lowry, Ben Dempsey and Paul Kingston. Sometimes it's just not meant to be. Absolutely, yeah. Like, and you could, from watching this game, even though Leitrim were sticking sticking in it probably until the second half, there was only two or three points in it. You could tell like Leitrim were, were were by far the, the better team. And and look, to be fair to Leitrim, they they got promotion. That was the big goal for them. They're up in Division Three now next year. That was the big focus for for Andy Moore and for Mickey Graham and the lads. And they they done that. And, and anything else after that was was just a bonus. Like getting to be in Crow Park first of all was 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 huge. Um, but look, fair play to Leitrim. They're, you know they're 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 scoring a lot of goals um at the minute as you said Kingston with one two Owen Lowry with one two Ben Dempsey getting a goal as well and um, they're motoring along very nicely and I think their next game is awfully in in the in the, uh, in, the in the Leinster Court Finals I probably fancy them to beat them to be honest and um they would then probably most likely you'd imagine play Dublin in a Leinster semi final so they could be very much back in Crow Park in in a couple of weeks time um. And albeit, look, I think you'd fancy Dublin to, to, to beat Leash all day long. But look, to be fair to Leash, they've had a very good season going up to into Division Three. And do you know what? Like in the Talchin Cup, they could very well be dark horses or, or, or potentially one of the favourites as well. And um, because when you look at Division Three and Four, there really isn't a lot between a lot of the teams. You see a lot of teams go from four to two quite a lot. You see teams go from two down to four quite a lot as well. And like. Mad thing is, I'd, I'd probably, I'd, I'd be more confident of Leash 
winning the Towson Cup than it would be Kildare, which might be a bit of a mad statement. <laughs> but I, 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 just, I just think Leash are looking a lot better than them right now, in my opinion. Kildare catching strays. <laughs> didn't even play. <laughs> um, yeah, look, Leach have not get too down about it. The objective of the season was to go up. Um, and they, they've done that. So definitely they can hold their heads high. Leash did seem that they were too good for the division right from the start. They seemed that they were on a one-way ticket out immediately. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the other results from the weekend very, very quickly. Uh, this was a football-based episode. We we're just going to talk about the finals. So from the hurling championships, they had the hurling league. Sorry, there was a couple of league finals. Division 2A's final. Leash battered Carlo 222 to 112 in Dr. Cullen Park. Very, very surprising there. Derry beat Tyrone 114 to 18 in the Division 2B final in Owen Beg. In the Division 3A final, Mayo 319, Sligo 316 in Mikhail Park. Good win there for Mayo. Division 3B final, Warwickshire beat Fermanagh 118 to 113 in Aderny. So, like, the Hurling League finals there, obviously the big one is Leash hammering Carlo. Did not see that coming. Absolutely not. No, and I was looking at the highlights on on the Sunday game last night. It was it, it was it was certainly very very surprising overall. Like I mean, especially after Carlo winning the Joe McDonough last year. Um, I think they beat Leash in the league earlier in the year as well. So you were expecting Carlo to to do the job, but like it's been interesting with Leash because I remember when they were in the Leinster Championship, you know, a couple of years ago, and they were in the the All Ireland series and everything else. They they were often very competitive with big teams. You know they. They beat Dublin one year. I remember they nearly beat Clare. They had, they had a couple of like near misses in terms of nearly getting big results. And then they just seemed to completely fall off a cliff and, um, you know, struggled last year in Division 2 and and in the, the, the Joe McDonough as well. But, yeah, huge, huge result for them. Uh, seeing Adrian Dunphy getting a, getting eight points. Tomas Keyes with a goal and four as well. So, yeah, fair play to, to Leash and maybe a, a slight setback for, for Carlo going into the Leinster Championship. It certainly is, and it marks out. Uh, it certainly marks out Leash as being one of the front runners for the Joe McDonough Cup, as if we didn't think it already. And it is the same old soldier still going. Paddy Purcell has been mm. playing fantastic in the league for Leash. He's all always been a fantastic hurler for that county. And then the Camogie results as well. One in Division One A, Galway beat Cork fourteen points to nine. Tipperary beat Clare four nineteen to seven points in Cusick Park and Ennis. Kilkenny beat Waterford two ten to thirteen in the Setu Arena. And then in One B, Limerick three eleven, Wexford one fifteen. So Wexford's first defeat of the Division One B campaign. Dublin beat Antrim sixteen points to nine, and Kerry beat Down two eight to fourteen points. So with that, the top two in one A are now Tipperary and Galway. So they will play each other in the league final. Wexford and Dublin top one B, and will go up to Division One A next season. Absolutely, yeah. Like, and I suppose both of those games should be should, should be very interesting. And um, yeah, some some big results in there. Like especially Wexford, obviously huge result for them getting over the line and. Yeah, looking forward now to, to both finals in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, certainly. And look, Tipperary have been very, very impressive in 1A. I mean, they narrowly missed out on making it to a final. Galway are in their phase of rebuilding as well. So very, very interesting stuff. Well, to wrap it up, we were treated to an absolute feast of Gaelic Games action across the weekend. And whoever called for the league finals to be scrapped, you look like a bit of a mug right now in this particular moment in time. For, you know, very entertaining league finals, albeit a couple of them were a little bit one-sided. But the Division 1 final, man, what a game between Dublin and Derry. Like, we could talk about it all day. But that is the end of the episode, an hour in the books. Thanks very much to anybody who tuned in, who left a comment, anything like that. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks very much to Aaron for jumping on the show. Until the next one, guys, here on Unclear, Torara. <laughs>